Hello out there, YouTube land. Ooh, see, I said YouTube land. I wanted to say TV land, but I know we're on YouTube. I'm Lauren Cadillac, this is Cadillac Law, and today we are here to talk about guardianship. So, before we get into that, and as always, we've got some housekeeping items. Look below, hit subscribe, click on the bell, send a link, write us a comment, hit like, do any of those things. Share with your friends, share with your parents. Let's get into the good stuff. Guardianship. So, I would like to say there are two types of guardianships, but there are two types of guardianships, and then there are two types within that. So, there are family law guardianships, and then there are adult guardianships. What we're going to be talking today about is an adult guardianship. So, this is the situation where your elderly parent is no longer able to or friend or cousin. Or, I'm, we're gonna use parent as an example today, but you're not locked into only being the guardian for your parents. So um, this is when this person can't make certain decisions on their own anymore. So there are two types of guardianships within an adult guardianship. There's the guardian of the body and the guardian of the estate. So guardian of the body is very much like how it sounds. Uh, you are going to be making medical decisions for that person and you're going to be the guardian of their body. You're going to essentially take over the role of making their bodily decisions. You're going to be working with their doctors, talking about treatments, um, et cetera, et cetera. The guardian of the estate is someone who um, is the guardian of what I like to call business. So uh, if I'm in a coma, which I have been before, and um, I have a guardian of a state appointed, that is going to be someone who is going to be able to pay my mortgage. They're going to be able to go into my bank. They're going to be able to ensure that I'm getting my direct deposit. Uh, if there's a disability claim, they'll be able to manage that. They'll be able to manage my business, the business aspects of my everyday life. When you are selecting a, a guardianship designation, and that is really the only time you have the ability to choose your guardian. Uh, typically, when you're in a situation where you need a guardian, the reason for that is because you can't make decisions like, who's gonna be my guardian? So we do a document where, as part of a state plan, where you say, okay, if something happens, this is the person that's gonna be my guardian. Now, the judge does not have to appoint that person per se. There are reasons they may not. Uh, however, they are going to take that document and they're gonna weigh that heavily in their evidence. So they are going to weigh your opinion more heavily than uh, other pieces of evidence, so to speak. So you can do something like, for instance, I have two sisters. One is really loving and kind and one is really good with money. So if something happens to me and I need a guardian of my body, that is gonna be the kind and loving sister who will make sure I do not get bed sores. If something happens to me and I need a guardian of my estate, that is gonna be the sister who's good with money because I know she is good with money. Uh, the kind, loving sister, she would spend all of my money. She would do it in the most loving and kind way, but she would spend all of the money. So you can have separate guardians. You don't have to have the same person of body and estate. You know, if my kids were grown up and one was a doctor and one was an accountant, I would obviously put the accountant in charge of my estate and the doctor in charge of my body. But my point is, is that you can really choose whoever it is you want. Now, the issue occurs when people don't have a power of attorney or they don't have these type of things designated in advance where you would need a guardian and the court will come in and appoint one for you. When the court is using the code to appoint your guardian, you're not going to, well, anytime, you're not gonna be able to have a guardian with a criminal background. And if the court is having to interview people to determine who can be your guardian, your love, uh, your, your friends and loved ones who might have stepped up to the plate, if they are or they have a criminal background, they are gonna go on the stand and have to describe that again. So it's basically a second trial for them and hashing up these things that happened, you know, who knows when. So if you do these forms and you choose people who don't have a criminal history, hopefully by the time you need them, they don't acquire a criminal history, uh, you can really save a lot of time and effort and heartache. 
And an even better way, uh, it, you know, we do these designations, these guardianship designations to help ease the process and create a faster process when a guardianship is needed. But a nice way to avoid needing a guardianship is a power of attorney, which I've talked about in another video and I shall link below. I appreciate your time and I hope you've learned something today. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment, like, subscribe, or give us a call at the office, 972-845-1200. Thank you.